We're going to spend a little bit of time today going into the facets of dif differentiation, how you use technology to really get at that. We have two products that we're going to show you guys about different ways that you can take that, integrate it into what you're doing, um, and really make an impact with students all across the board. Let's start off first by really kind of just understanding what are the pieces of differentiation. So when you're taking a look and you're trying to determine how we're going to sit down and kind of work through assigning additional material to students, and really finding the, the uh, processes and the needs of, of a particular group of students or an individual students, we really need to be looking at what's the content we're attempting to provide for them, what's the process of how we're going to deliver that, what product are we looking to achieve out of that, and where's the environment that I'm using in order to really make that effect with them. Now, technology kind of really does bring to the forefront all the conversation. And if you use a curriculum in the technology portion, you're really able to kind of uh, adjust very quickly for all the different students that are in your groups. So what we're going to do is talk a little bit about how do we at Compass Learning approach the idea of differentiation. Uh, well, we have two products that we use to really do that. Uh, you have the Odyssey product, which really is going to reach students across that ability level, really pull them into the content, determine where they're at, and help provide them uh, with the necessary uh, content pieces in order to really be able to grasp over those skill gaps that they may have. Um, you also have Renzuli Learning, which helps to identify a student's interest level, their expression styles, um, and really get into the heart of the whole child and really, to, you know, what is that student really looking for and how are they going to be able to really produce the uh, final outcome, the product that we're looking for at the end as far as that learning. This is how we really look at it. So we have that expression style, ability level, learning style, and interest style, and inside of there, what you really are going to get is a package of what Compass Learning provides as far as the content. So you get a content piece, and what happens with the content is, again, we're still going to differentiate that out for the students. We use this type of format where we assess them up front around objectives, and we can use state objectives, common core objectives. Uh, we then prescribe to them a learning path based on the strengths and weaknesses that we find out of their assessment. They get that in, inside that learning path, they have the different instructional pieces, and that instruction is going to then pull them in and provide, again, that skill gap pieces that student needs, move them forward in that content piece, really help them to grasp the full picture of what it is that we're attempting to do with the objectives. The teachers then get that report back to say, hey, how are the students really performing? Where's the data that shows me that the students are really making that growth? And that's what the reporting process is going to do. Now, I'm going to take us through all of those pieces here, and I'm going to show you how they all fit together, especially reaching again into that whole idea of the whole child, really trying to understand where the student is coming from, how they're going to learn, and what ways are they going to then produce that product. The personalized learning path piece is actually an automated piece inside of the Odyssey system. So what happens is we choose the objectives, and those can be built around scope and sequences, around particular interventions. They can be built around uh, uh, full course uh, understanding, whatever it is that we're looking for. And then our system assesses them there and automatically prescribes a learning path based on how they perform through that assessment. So students, again, are receiving curriculum at their level across the pieces that they need to have. And the system is really kind of doing that for them, which frees the teacher up and allows the teacher to engage your students more as a facilitator as you move them through that curriculum. It's going to be a blending of exploratory learning opportunities. Again, if we're bringing Renzulli into this, an opportunity to really kind of have students engage themselves deeper into the understanding of how they themselves are going to accumulate that knowledge and then express that understanding. We are always looking for skill mastery, so there's always percentage pieces that we're going to pull into the into the conversation, formative as well as summative pieces, to again provide for students that understanding of the growth that they're having over a time period. Now, how do we do all of that? What's inside those prescriptive learning paths? Well, what we have is an interactive curriculum. That curriculum is a K-12, fully comprehensive. It reaches across Common Core as well as uh, your state objectives. Um, it's a research base as far as the strategies that we pull into those activities. And in fact, I'm going to show you guys a few activities to allow you to see how we reach out to the students, how we bring them into that understanding of the content. So to do that, we're actually going to take a look at two different types of activities. I'm going to take a look at a high school end as well as a more of a, a fifth and sixth grade activity here. So we're actually going to go live out to the site. And we'll start with that physics activity here. We'll skip over that so, little intro and get to the instruction. You're down at the DMV renewing your license, and without even asking, they give you a science license too. Something about all the similarities between driving and physics. How driving is just like conducting a massive science experiment. I guess they felt like having one was as good as having the other. 
Either way, what do you say we take a spin and do a little sciencing of our own? I vote that we start by analyzing speed and see just how much our position changes over time. Hey there, Speedy. You mind if I call you Speedy? Because that's definitely what you were doing back there, speeding. Now, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you would never intentionally drive seven meters per second above the speed limit. And then maybe you just need a little lesson on the concept of speed. So I'm going to let you off with a warning right now. But first, you get a free lesson about speed from yours truly, Officer Bladley. Hopefully, this will keep you out of trouble in the future. Now, first things first. Speed. Now, I'm just going to mute him for a little bit and talk to you about what you're really seeing in here. So this way you have an idea. Again, when we differentiate out that curriculum, what is it the students are really getting? So again, I saw the humor, right? Everybody kind of saw that. It's a relating uh, concept, right? The student, the student is seeing this more as an interactive. It's as if I'm in the car. I'm receiving that one-on-one -on -one tutorial portion here. That's really how we're going to reach that student. We want to engage them in that manner to bring them into the content, to provide them an example of what it is that they're really learning. You see that we're going to have the uh, different types of vocabulary is going to pop up on the screen, the different definitions. He's going to be going over the instruction. It's very explicit. It's down to the very letter. Um, and that, again, is really what you're looking for. Again, no matter whether you're looking for intervention, enrichment, you want something for students that when it differentiates out for them, it's going to give them exactly what they need as a whole instead of having to try to have them fit all the different pieces together. That's really what our curriculum is going to do for that. Now, that's a quick example of more of that high school end of an activity. And in all of our high school activities, we also have included transcripts. Again, again, looking for differentiating out for students, the students who need more of that visual uh, representation of the language. We absolutely have that as an additional scaffold that you can use. But let's take another look at a different activity here. One that, uh, again, we're going to be pulling back more a little bit towards the elementary middle school area. And what you'll notice is that it has a different style to it, a different look. Uh, we do that on purpose as we move from content to content, grade level to grade level. We don't want students just being engaged consistently across the same looking style of an activity. So let's go ahead and turn this up for you. And now, with today's top story, working with percents, the woman who's got a hankering for the news, it's Sally Newsworth. That's right, T-Bone. Today you'll be learning all about working with percents. That means finding a percent of a number and working with real-life percent problems. To help you through this lesson, let's go to a man who deals with percents with statistics all the time. Although, his stats are mostly 100%. Here's High Tops Thompson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows that High Tops is the tops in basketball, and all my stats are about 100%, but I use percents all the time. I give my agent and my manager a percent of my paycheck, so it's helpful with money. I also use percents when comparing other basketball players. Oh, there are so many more ways to use percents. We'll get into those later. Let's get jump started with the math behind all that and go right into a problem. What is 50% of 60? Now check this. Here's one way to solve the problem. First, remember that percent means part of a whole. If I make a chart to show the percents from 0 to 100 in increments of 25, and then place it next to a chart going from 0 to 60, you can probably already see how to solve this problem visually. To find 50% of 60, I placed a red bar up to the 50% mark. Now, now if 50% is half of 100%, can you find out what half of 60 is? Well, that's right, it's 30. 50% 50 of 60 is 30. To use this method, first set up the 100% grid. Next, you mark the grid for 25, 50, and 75%. Next, write your number and then calculate. I'm going to kind of just let it go and uh, give you a little conversation here. Uh, something that I didn't get a chance to show you through this one or, or, or the previous one is the comprehension checks that come after the instruction itself. We want to make sure that as they receive the instruction, there's an opportunity for them to practice that and really kind of move forward in their understanding. Um, those comprehension checks have a built-in piece to them, that, which is called a critical mistakes framework. 
What our critical mistake framework is, and it's actually a patented piece for us, what we do with that is based on a student's uh, incorrect response. Instead of popping up a generic reteach to try to push them back on track, we actually use a reteach geared towards their response. So when they actually choose an incorrect response, whether it be A, B, C, or D, um, the system is going to pull up a reteach and say, you chose that because this is the misconception that you have. And we're going to fix that misconception and put you back on track. And again, that's something that's very unique to what we do. I'm going to go ahead and push back to understanding a little bit more of how we use all of this for differentiation. So now that you have an idea of what the curriculum is and what's being offered to the students, how do we take that and make it more of a differentiation opportunity for students? Well, again, I want to explain to you how the system's going to function inside of Odyssey. And again, this is our differentiation by ability here. So again, we're going to assess them up front. We have a full diagnostic piece already built into the Odyssey program. Again, it's all built around the state objectives or your common core. It then prescribes for them activities based on their performance, mastery, strengths, and weakness. They then receive different styles of activities. Again, you saw a few of those, so that's the type of instruction they're then receiving from that point forward. And from the teacher perspective, you're getting quite a bit of data about the students. Now, when you receive that data, oftentimes there's this whole process around data mining. And we're going to get a talk into how we, how we kind of work around data mining, how we use data to really help us, again, differentiate even more for students. But let's talk a little bit about how does Renzuli come into this picture now? Well, again, Odyssey is capturing that differentiation by ability. Renzulli is really coming in and allowing a student to take a profile, which then allows the teacher and the student to understand how they learn. Where's their interest levels? Um, what kind of expression styles do they like to use? Uh, and it allows us to then wrap around the content, around a real, uh, a real solidified piece that a student can then produce by the end of it that, again, is going to be geared towards their interests, their levels. Now, you wrap that with some of the content that you see out, out of Odyssey, and you get a full knockout piece that, again, pushes the student through the understanding of the content and then allows them with Renzulli to kind of really produce what they re really need to produce. So let's take this example here for Renzulli. What happens is, again, a teacher can go right into the Renzulli learning product and actually pick a topic that they want to have for their instruction. What it's then going to do for them, let's say that we have climate change. What it's then going to do for you as a teacher is it's going to pull all these resources from across the web and say, here are all the different resources, here are all the different projects that you can use with your students around climate change. Now, that's all great, but it's a lot of material that a, student then has, or that a teacher then has to kind of sort through and figure out well, what matches with what student. Well, what Odyssey does for you is it automatically reorganizes all of those resources and puts them into each child so that each child already has their necessary pieces built around, again, their expression, their interests, right? And it's allowing the teacher to stick with one topic as they move them forward, but every student can now have a different outcome based on how they want to perform that. It's a great way for you to be able to have that connection between your students and the curriculum. It's not this curriculum who's kind of driving how my students learn. It's the students driving how they learn, and you're just kind of pushing the content and the topics right to them based on what, they, what, what they're going to produce. You as a teacher then receive these unique uh, profile pieces, and you can build your assignments around these different profiles and automatically match up, those match up those activities with those different students. And every student can end up, again, we're having the same topic across the top there of what we're trying to attempt to learn, but each student may have different activities that are going to, again, meet their needs and allow the teacher to be able to keep the interest and keep the engagement for every student as they move them forward in the curriculum. Now, again, you tie this type of project-based pieces here, this type of activities that you're pulling out of Renzulli with some content that allows the student to really have the foundation in order to perform on this type of material, and you're going to have that knockout opportunity for differentiation for your kids. So how do we use those assessment pieces? I wanted to show you the process as we walk through assessment inside of Odyssey. How do we actually put this material together, and, and how do we assign it out to students? I'm going to show you the process, and you're really going to be kind of uh, a little shocked at how simplified the process really is. And then I'm going to take you also through the process of the assessment for Renzulli, because there is an assessment in Renzulli, and we'll talk about that in a second there. When you go into Odyssey, you have quite a bit of different options inside of there. You'll have your state listed there. You'll have Common Core. You'll have all the different uh, pieces that also align with your, your particular state needs. You then automatically receive back the different objectives that you, again, are being held to from the teaching perspective as far as the uh, mastery level for your students and assessing, assessing for those. 
That gets pushed over into some uh, properties that you would then assign, one of the most important being that mastery score. You have control over mastery, of what percentage you believe mastery to be or what your district or school site believes mastery to be. The system, again, automatically pulls the assessment together for you and automatically pulls the learning path for you. So again, here's the process that you do. You're just choosing the objectives you want, basically, titling your assessment. And inside that assessment are going to automatically be those activities, same act type of activities that you just saw. The system pulls it together. Now, here's what's really great. You're actually getting activities across varying grade levels with, with, within Odyssey. We do that on purpose because we want to be able to scaffold back and pull students forward. And again, it automatically does that for you. Another automatic piece that's built into our learning paths are what we call decision points. What a decision point allows you to do is place mastery over top of the different quizzes that a student then takes inside their learning paths. Those are really key because that is your first level of intervention. Instead of a teacher having to constantly be logged in and trying to figure out is the student mastering, is the student mastering, are they just kind of clicking, 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 the system's going to take over that responsibility there and say if the student's kind of clicking through and not reaching your mastery as they continue to move forward, we're going to cycle them back. We're going to have them reattempt. Right? And then that kind of clarifies for you whether or not the student is really having some problems or whether or not they're just kind of clicking through. How's Renzulli approach assessment? To me, the profiler is really an assessment opportunity. We're going to assess where, again, where a student is across their interest levels, their abilities, their expressions, their learning styles. Again, we're trying to get, capture that whole picture of the student, really, really understand what it is I'm going to do from my teaching perspective to engage them and bring them into the curriculum. Student then receives a profile, and in their profile, and teachers have access to all these profiles, student also has access to their own profile. I remember when I first took my first profile, it was really interesting because it had me dead on. Dead on. And it showed me what my real interests were, different ways that I like to learn, and all of it was exactly dead on. I, I really love uh, doing group work, um, and it showed that that was my number one style of, of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of learning. Um, it showed me my expression style was definitely something where it's more interactive, and as you can tell, that's what I enjoy doing with my, with my uh, expression. So uh, this is a really a great, great profile, and it's going to really identify for the students as well as the teacher exactly who these students are that are sitting in your room, how they want to learn that curriculum, and how you're going to be able to engage them. What does that look like, again, inside of Renzulli Learning? Well, what you're going to get is you get that student and that teacher input. So the student puts into there and says, here's who I am. Here's how I learn. The teacher then sits down and says, well, I'm glad that, that that's how you learn, but here's what I'm also responsible for teaching you. And we're going to push those two things together. When we push those two things together, what you get is what we call the differentiation engine. And the differentiation engine pulls from a huge bank of activities and says, all right, Here's all the different activities that you have. I'm going to match those different activities up with the learning styles. I'm going to match them up, again, based completely around your teacher scope and sequence, what it is you're responsible for providing. And we're going to push that material right out to the students. And we're going to push it out and allow them to produce uh, a couple of different things. You can have just a self-assessment where a student kind of works through the knowledge and then reassesses themselves through some questioning. You can have a full assignment base where they actually need to produce a published piece by the end of it. There's also this piece around a personal success plan where students are saying, okay, from day one of my school year to the last day of the school year, this is what I'm attempting to do. And they can actually tie their assignments directly to their personal success plan and say, this is how this is leading to what my success that I wanted here at the end. Teachers also have access to create wizard projects. Um, and the project makers are like having, you know, that authentic learning opportunity for students. Uh, and again, you tie this with the content that you're getting out of the Odyssey program what you again have is an opportunity to provide an opportunity to provide for students the skills that they need. And then you take this and you plug that right into here and you're going to provide for them the published piece that's really going to show that they understand that material and that they move forward with it. And again, you're keeping it engaging for them. You're keeping it at a high level of interest. So how do we then use data for this? Well, a couple different ways. Odyssey has quite a bit of different reports that you can pull out. Um, but I'm really going to show you, again, we had a talk around the ideas of uh, the data mining for teachers. Teachers nowadays are spending so much time. There are so many data resources out there. You can walk around this floor and see all different kinds of companies that are providing data resources, data housing for, you, for your schools. With that comes a, this opportunity for teachers to be able to really see for students where they're at and where they're going. 
The problem is, is that it takes a lot of time for teachers to dive into the data and pull all those different analyses out. So what we wanted to do is a couple of different things. First and foremost, you can always get an, an on-demand report anytime you want out of the Odyssey system and see how students are performing. But more importantly, what we now do is we email all reports on a frequency table that you want, on the day that you want, so that you then receive that data automatically in your email and you're not spending your time inside of Odyssey trying to figure out what options am I choosing again? Where am I trying to pull the data out of? I already know what my goals are and I'm going to get that data automatically emailed to me and I can track it very simply. Another thing that we did is we created a teacher dashboard. And we took all this data that you're really looking for and we bubbled it up to the forefront. It's a very student-centered opportunity up here for you. You have a couple of different lenses to be able to pull. You have interactive flyouts. And in fact, let me show you some of those interactive flyouts. With the interactive flyouts, it's an opportunity. Again, you can click on any student from that list and see the performance that they have. It allows you to track and intervene very quickly with struggling students. Again, you're not wandering around, flipping papers, trying to figure out, OK, what, where is this student at? I see it immediately right on my screen. And I can determine right away, because it's going to tell me what objectives that they're having problems with, what assignments they're working out of. It's going to show me time on task as they move through those. But it also gives me my percentages, and it groups my students for me every day. So it refreshes that dashboard every day and regroups your students according to how they've been performing. That flyout shows you the last 10 lowest activities. Again, it's going to be grouped by assignment, and it also gives you that time on task. Very key pieces. There's another interactive piece on that dashboard, which is the at a glance option. With the at a glance, what you're getting, again, is not just a per student, but you're getting it by assignment. So now I can sit down and I can really see by assignment or even by objective that my students have been working on, Who's performing to where they need to be? Who's mastered certain objectives? Again, who's needing that deep intervention? Now, you tie this type of data right back into the Odyssey program or even right into Renzulli Learning, and what you're going to get is an opportunity to bring those students from that intervention all the way up to that enrichment. So again, it's, being, it's more about being proactive when you're talking about differentiating instruction for your kids. It's not about being reactive. It's about being proactive. And the best way to be proactive is to have the data at your hands, uh, at your fingertips, ready to actually act on. So the more we can give you that data up front, the easier it becomes for teachers to sit down and be able to act on the data and say, here's where I need to move my students. Here are the students who are ready for this type of project. Here are the students who, based on their learning style, really need this type of material. I'm going to provide the content to fill their gaps and allow them to, again, continue to move forward in their understanding. So I just want to quickly summarize for you and give you, again, the big picture of what it is that we do. Um, we are wrapped around really understanding the child as a whole. That's really what Compass Learning at this point has become. We have two products that give us that understanding, two products that give us the opportunity to provide them with content and move them forward. But that's really what we're looking at. We want to be able to reach every student exactly where they are because we understand that's what teachers are being asked to do. So the more resources and tools we can provide, the better it's going to be for them. And if we follow that same circle, the assess, prescribe, instruct, and report, you're going to get that knockout opportunity again where you're going to be able to provide your students exactly what they need when they need it for that just-in-time learning opportunity and also to be able to keep yourself accountable to what it is that you need to be uh, working with your students. We'll go ahead and open it up for some questions. Sure. Are these and two separate that you can get? Can you get both? Can you just get one or do they? That's what you were saying. <laughs> so a that's a great question. Um, the answer to that is yes, you can do it where it's either or you can do it where it's both. Um, as you see, if you're really looking to have a full differentiation opportunity with your students, having both is really going to be the, where that money marker is going to be for you because you're going to get that opportunity again to give them content that they need at their level, that again you're being held accountable for anyway, but you're also going to be able to engage them in the curriculum through the Renzulli Learning and bring them forward in a true understanding of how they're really going to use that content later. Any other additional questions? Is it a site license? Yeah. The question is, is the site license? Um, we have a we have three different models that you can kind of push when it comes to the Odyssey program. And uh, with the Odyssey program, you can do either subscription 
where you're doing it single user, where you're doing a concurrent user, or you have it where you can buy the curriculum outright and own it like you would like a textbook. Um, so it all depends on the model that you have uh, as far as the access to technology and moving those types of things forward. When it comes to Renzulli Learning, Renzulli Learning is a subscription model. Make sure to correct me if I'm wrong on that one. But uh, Renzulli Learning is a subscription model. Um, very low price point uh, on, on that end. But again, what you're getting is that whole picture of the child through that profile. To I me, mean, that's the real magic of that, is getting that profile and being able to see, here's the kid and here's what I can give them. Yes, both products are web-based. Good question. Um, when it comes down to uh, mobile devices and the different types of technology that students can access the curriculum through, um, Renzulli Learning is definitely something that can be accessed anywhere that you have access to uh, to the internet portion, because you're, you're grabbing other websites and pulling them forward for that student. Um, now, if any of those materials have a flash-based piece, then of course you're going to run into some sort of issue with some mobile devices that are on the market. Um, Compass Learning really utilizes a lot of flash. Um, so at this point, through the, some of the mobile devices, the iPad, right, um, you're not going to be able to run Compass Learning to the highest effectiveness that you can. There are ways around through proxy servers and things like that that you can use. Uh, but you can have this done through computer labs, through computer banks that you have in the classroom. Students do it. Um, we have implementation. <laughs> she's, she's having fun with me. Look at that. <laughs> but we have implementations where students actually do it as a homework tool. Uh, we also have implementations where, you know, the whole idea of the flipped classroom is really, you know, very prevalent right now. Or we're seeing a lot of uh, great data coming out of that. And so we have a lot of that being used as well. So kids are kind of pre, pre being preloaded with, with curriculum up front and then shown into the classroom with the basis of understanding and then able to have a conversation around that. So different ways to access it, different technology pieces. Again, it all depends on the infrastructure of a school site. Do you have any free trials? Another good question. Uh, from our website, you actually can see all the different curriculum. So you have access to be able to preview curriculum from there. Uh, we do do what's called proof of concepts. So you know, if you want to sit down and have a targeted group that you wanted to trial this around, uh, we can definitely work with you around those types of things. Um, but when we do those types of material, we really want to make sure that we're being very targeted and that we're really focusing in because we're going to do it for a short window and we want to see those results. Um, so absolutely, we can definitely do something to make sure that you try it before you buy it kind of thing. Absolutely, we can do that. Anything else? Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we are over at 1218, uh, booth 1218, down all the way at the end over there. So if you do have additional questions you want to come by, you want to see even more curriculum, definitely come by. We'll, we can dive even deeper. All right, thank you guys. And thank you very much for allowing us the opportunity to be here.